Hello, I'm Dave Prouse. In this video, I'm going to show you how to disable DHCP within three different virtualization platforms, VirtualBox, VMware Workstation, and KVM. I'm connected to a Windows 10 computer right now, which is running both VirtualBox and VMware Workstation. So let's start with VirtualBox and bring that up. We're going to go to File, Preferences, go to Network, and we want to select our NAT network that we're utilizing. Now I want you to use NAT during the webinar and have all your virtual machines in the NAT network. It's important to use network address translation for a variety of reasons. And I show how to create a NAT network in the earlier videos, and there's a step-by-step -step for it in the documentation. But it's really easy. If you don't have one, click the plus sign, and it'll make one for you. And so to turn off DHCP, we'll go to our NAT network and double-click on it. And that brings up the NAT network details window. And you'll see here that it supports DHCP. Well, what's the reason for this? Because during the webinar, we're going to be installing a DHCP server, the ISC Kia DHCP server within a Debian virtual machine. And generally, you don't want to have two DHCP servers unless one's a failover. So you could have a conflict if you have two DHCP servers. So once we get our DHCP server set up, this one could get in the way. So we have to disable it. To do that, we just deselect it and then click OK. OK for preferences and then close out of VirtualBox. That way it's turned off and our clients will be able to get their IP addresses from the DHCP server that we've created. Then you can bring VirtualBox back up and your virtual machines and so on. So really easy to do. Next one is VMware Workstation. Let's open that up. Okay. For VMware Workstation, we go to Edit and go to the Virtual Network Editor. That'll bring up the Virtual Network Editor window. And you'll see down here, if, well, if we go to NAT, the NAT network is what we want to work with. You'll see that DHCP is enabled and you see it's checkmarked here, but it's grayed out because we have to get in as a administrator. So we need those administrator privileges. So we'll click on change settings. If you are an admin on this machine, then it'll just bring you back in. If you're not, you'll have to type in uh, the password of an admin. So we'll click change settings now and we'll say yes. And that'll bring that back up. And now you also see the bridged option, which you can do if you want, but I recommend using NAT for the webinar and for testing. And when we click on that, we can see here, use local DHCP service to distribute IP addresses to VMs. That's what we would deselect, All right? Now, if you look at the settings for that, you'll see the uh, range of the IPs and you'll see the uh, IP network number, which in this case for me is 192.168.80. Might be different for you depending on what virtualization platform you're using or uh, what installation you've done and, and so forth. And I believe that VMware Workstation uh, picks these randomly on the third octet. But this gives you an idea of where the IP addresses are coming from. If your client gets an IP address on 192.168.80, then you're going to say, okay, most likely that came from VMware Workstation, right? Okay, I'm going to cancel that, but we want to deselect that use local DHCP service so it doesn't interfere with the DHCP server that we're going to build and then apply it and okay, it'll stop the DHCP service. Okay for that, and that's finished. This is just an eval version on Windows, but I do use VMware Workstation on Windows and on Linux on my main systems. That's just a quick overview of how to do it in VMware Workstation. And finally, I'm going to get out of this guy, get out of that Windows computer. Finally, I said I would show it in KVM. Those are the three virtualization platforms that I support for 
uh, customers and also for uh, my webinars and for any training that I do. Uh, I actually support Proxmox as well. But those are the three that I support, VirtualBox, VMware, uh, Workstation, and KVM. So if we go to KVM here, this is the Virtual Machine Manager, the GUI portion for KVM. And if we go to the main heading here and go to Edit and Connection Details and go to Virtual Networks, you'll see my IP version 4 configuration, 192.168.122.0, and you'll see the DHCP range. I've actually modified this. By default, it does it between uh, .2 to .254. I modified that so I'd have some free IP address space during my labs. Um, but we would have to modify this further to change it and make it not hand out DHCP uh, obtained addresses. So we have to go to the command line and I need to get to root. Okay, now there's a couple ways to do this. You can use the versh command and you would do a net edit and the name of your virtual network. So for example, default or whatever. You may have some issues with this. So a lot of times what we end up doing is modifying a file within the uh, KVM structure. So we'll go through there, we'll do a CD slash uh, etc slash libvert slash kimu slash networks. Okay, press enter. And if we look in there, we'll see I do have two XML files already. But generally, what you'll have is just default.xml. Let's take a look at that. We'll do a vim default.xml and press enter and you will see the DHCP section here and the range that we're using. What you would have to do is you would have to remove this section. And so what I normally do is I'll make a backup of it. I'll do a copy and uh, take default.xml and rename it uh, to say default backup dot XML. There we go. All right, so if we look in there, we have our default dot XML and we have our default dash backup dot XML. So any changes that we make within this, if it does, if it causes problems with KVM, we can always go back to our backup. And in fact, I have a backup here. A lot of times I'll just put an underscore on the front of the file name. That's my original backup but we just created this one. And so now we can modify default.xml. And so again, what we want to mo remove is this range here. We want to get rid of this whole DHCP statement. There we go. Now it tells you at the top, warning, this is an auto-generated file. Changes to it are likely to be overwritten and lost. That's not the case on Debian running KVM. So uh, if you're on a different distribution, you'll have to do that first option, that first method that I said, versh net edit default. But here on Debian, that's the uh, operating system of my host, I have to actually modify it here in the XML file. And then we can save it. And that is now saved. If we go back to it, we see DHCP is gone. We would close out KVM and restart it. And then that will allow uh, our DHCP server that we're creating in the webinar to function without getting any uh, conflicts, without having our DHCP within KVM get in the way, All right? At the end, when done, I would get rid of that default file altogether. So I'll just get rid of that guy and rename the backup once again. And then we can just do a move for that. And we're going to say default underscore backup dot XML. 
and we're just going to call that default.xml. Oh, I didn't type it right. I put an underscore. It's a dash. My apologies. There we go. So now we have the default back, and if we do default.xml, we'll see that we have our DHCP range back there. And all is good in Linux land. So that's how you can modify the DHCP so that it's disabled in VirtualBox, VMware Workstation, and KVM.